Welcome to Emulating Raspberry Robin with Atomic Red Team. I am Paul Michaud, Principal Incident Handler here at Red Canary, joined by my colleague, Lauren. Welcome, Lauren. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Paul. Hey, everyone. I'm Lauren Popper, Principal Analyst on Red Canary's Intelligence Team. And today, Paul and I are going to talk to you briefly about what Raspberry Robin is and why it matters, and then dive deeper into opportunities to test your detection capabilities at different stages in the known intrusion chain. Right on. So before we go into the actual emulation, let's talk about some of what is Raspberry Robin and kind of some of the interesting pieces about it. Lauren, would you like to give us an overview? Absolutely. So at a high level, Raspberry Robin is Red Canary's name for a cluster of activity we first observed in September 21. Uh, it involves a worm that's typically installed via USB drive. So this activity cluster relies on MSI exec.exe to call out to its infrastructure often compromised QNAP devices using HTTP requests that typically contain a victim's user and device name. And we've also observed Raspberry Robin operators using Tor exit nodes as additional command and control infrastructure. So it's going into some of the latest things. So we wrote up an initial blog post outlining the research that we identified back in May. Um, so there's been uh, recent activity as well as some potential TTP changes, if I'm correct. And also Microsoft actually identified uh, activity of Raspberry Robin going back into uh, 2019 as well. Um, so we wrote up some new and ex uh, atomic red team tests as well as leveraging some existing ones. We'll actually go through the emulation plan. Um, so or are there any interesting things that we've kind of identified over the past, uh, recently about Raspberry Robin's change? Absolutely. So um, over the past several months, since we published our initial research, we've nabbed dozens of Raspberry Robin related threats in multiple customer environments. So when it comes to what we're seeing firsthand, most organizations where we at Red Canary have seen Raspberry Robin have ties to manufacturing technology or contracting sectors. Uh, public reporting, as Paul mentioned from Microsoft and Sequoia, indicates that Raspberry Robin is largely sector agnostic, but we think the pattern from our data in terms of victimology is potentially interesting uh, in looking at the overlap in a subset of the known victimology, though we'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge this might be an artifact from our vantage point. Um, so we still have an open question uh, that we've had since we published the blog around the operator's objectives. So far, either firsthand or in our public reporting, we haven't seen any Raspberry Robin intrusions progress to a point where we could generate an informed hypothesis on what the operator's objectives might be. We're continuing to monitor for uh, reports of post-exploitation activity that might provide more insight into Raspberry Robin broadly. And uh, want to remind everyone that um, infected and targeted are not the same. So this is an incredibly pervasive threat. Uh, so whether you've seen it or not, just given the volume, both in terms of individual number of times we've seen it and distinct organizations where we've seen infections, indicates the, the scope and the scale of this activity, uh, makes it worth considering in most organizations' threat models. So because of this, to help you evaluate how your detections are going to stack up against Raspberry Robin, we've developed these testing capabilities for some of the techniques associated with this threat. And Paul, let's go back to you and walk through those. All right, so let's jump into emulating Raspberry Robin. So we'll be using Atomic Red Team to emulate some of the techniques that uh, Raspberry Robin leverages in order to test our defenses and look at different data sources we can try and identify throughout the actual attack lifecycle of Raspberry Robin. So the first technique we'll be looking at is T1059, technique number three, which is going to be command prompt reading and executing from a file. So Raspberry Robin's initial execution uh, typically involves an LNK file that's stored on a USB device. So when a user plugs it in, they'll execute the LNK file, and then that kicks off command prompt reading from a CMD file, which is similar to an old school batch file. Um, with a specific file structure to it. So it'll read the contents of it and then execute it subsequently. Um, now, Lauren, there's actually some interesting pieces about the initial execution with the file naming convention. Can you talk a little about that? Absolutely, yeah. So the, the DLL file names that we see Raspberry Robin use seem to be composed of what feel like random combinations of alphanumeric characters, the file name with different three-letter file extensions which we can infer are likely an attempt to masquerade these malicious DLLs as legitimate files. Um, 
We've also seen Raspberry Robin operators rely on mixed case letters, so alternating upper and lower case. And we see a lot of adversaries do this as one means to evade common defensive controls. Excellent. So let's jump into our first atomic test and kind of take a look at some data points. So first technique that we'll be leveraging is again T105.003, test number five. So this is actually a newer test that we designed, which is simply going to read the contents of a CMD file. Again, the contents are very uh, old school file technique for scripting, which is similar to that of a batch file. Um, so in this case, all it's going to do is uh, use the slash R command, which is going to tell command prompt to read, and that'll use a redirector to actually tell it which file to point to. In the case of Raspberry Robin, to which Lauren just alluded to, was they have this interesting file formatting of mixed characters, uppercase, lowercase, but also interesting file names. So some of the ones we've seen are like .usb, .iso, .ico. Um, so in this case, we're just going to have it launch calculator, and we'll see what we kind of can identify. So once we execute the test, we'll see uh, some interesting outputs we'll show you here, and then also see calculator pop up in a split second. So in this case, we're reading from a specific file and in this, out of temp folder. And in this case, the start of it is at echo off, and then followed by the actual execution. Um, we'll take a look at some data in Splunk in a second. In this case, uh, Raspberry Robin would have an execution to an MSI file, which we'll jump into in the next atomic test. So in this case, we're using Sysmon to look at the data. So Sysmon has various event IDs that can be leveraged for different uh, fields to look for execution. In this case, we're using event ID one, which is process creation. Because we know the atomic test is going to use this specific file of T105903.cmd, we're using that to key off of. When looking at detection opportunities for this, um, interesting things to point out are going to again be the slash R, which is telling command prompt to read, but then also you kind of have this interesting uh, uh, character code here. This would actually be the less than sign, so it's telling it where to point to the file. Um, in the case in our blog, we actually point out and show you an example of what that execution looks like um, and what the kind of file formatting has been. So in this case, you'd want to look at things like command prompt executing from uh, potential remote devices, as well as using some of these parameters and using some regex matching to look for the interesting file names. That way you have a broad detection versus trying to rely on specific file names or specific execution patterns in case they do change, right? So that's one of the things we want to try and avoid is tying specifically to a procedure and more at that technique level. So that way we encompass anything they could potentially change in the future. All right. Atomic test number two for Raspberry Robin. In this case, we're using T1218 number seven, test number 11, which in this case, we're going to be leveraging MSI exec to download additional payloads. Uh, Lauren, can you talk about what Raspberry Robin does with this kind of execution pattern? Absolutely. So MSI exec typically downloads and executes legitimate installer packages, but we've also seen adversaries use it um, as a way to deliver additional malware to victims. So Raspberry Robin, we're going to see them download and execute content from an MSI. Excellent. Let's jump into it. All right. Again, so we're going to be using Invoke Atomic uh, Test for uh, from an executor framework for Atomic Red Team. So in this case, using technique 1218, number seven, and test number 11. So in this case, what we're going to see is Atomic Red Team is going to uh, call MSI exec, pull down an additional MSI that's hosted on GitHub. So we'll actually see some network connection and then some execution. We won't see actually anything pop up on the screen, very similar to what we would potentially see within Raspberry Robin, which is some, nothing that the user would actually notice. So we'll execute it. We get a nice little execution reach out and pull a remote MSI file. All done. So now let's take a look at the data. So there are a couple interesting things we can look for in this one. So one is we're going to look at process creation. So MSI exec executing and having specific command line parameters. MSI exec making a network connection to things containing with like HTTP or HTTPS is interesting. And then also kind of correlating it along with the slash Q or TAC Q, which is telling MSI exec to run kind of quietly in the background, don't display anything to the user. And then slash I, which is to actually install the package. 
So this is one technique we can look for, which we've seen uh, success with, which is again, MSI exec making the network connection. The other thing with Sysmon or even EDRs is to look for specific processes making network connections. Because uh, Sysmon creates, uh, has event ID three, which is a network connection, we can use that to identify. So anytime looking for MSI exec with a network connection would be an interesting tip off. In this case, we can see MSI exec connecting out to GitHub again, which is where our test for Atomic Red Team is hosted. All right, Raspberry Robin test number three. This one, T1218, test number eight. And in this case, we'll be using test number one specifically from Atomic Red Team, which is going to be ODBC conf loading and executing a locally stored DLL. So when MSI exec from Raspberry Robin executes, it pulls down an MSI package, which then will execute uh, drop additional DLLs as MSI exec goes through its installation process. In this case, open ODBC conf is actually uh, a tool from Microsoft that uh, is leveraged for open database connectivity, which is a standard API for accessing database management systems. So in the case for Microsoft, that would be things like Microsoft SQL servers. Um, what ODBC conf actually has is a parameter called reg server, which it tells, would allow you to point to a DLL and tell it to register and execute that DLL. So it'd be very similar to just saying register 32, execute or register this DLL, but it's actually built in. So adversaries will use this as a type of defense evasion as well as potential application control bypassing like WDAC or uh, ASR rules. Um, Laura, is there anything interesting about uh, this particular execution pattern from Raspberry Robin? Yeah, Paul, I think you hit the nail on the head with the defense evasion piece. So one thing we'd hypothesize is that Raspberry Robin is using this behavior to execute malicious DLLs without attracting scrutiny from defenders or blue teams. Uh, since ODB conf is a native Windows utility, this type of activity is malicious execution that might blend in with stuff that otherwise looks formal. So this is one, or we'd hypothesize this is one way they can effectively execute malicious code, uh, hopefully while evading defenses for at least a period of time. Excellent. Let's jump into our atomic test and take a look at what we can see. All right. Atomic test number three, again, can be using technique 1218, number eight, and test number one, which is going to be ODBC conf uh, executing, registering a locally stored DLL. So in this case, Atomic Red Team has a DLL that we can leverage and point to, so this will execute locally. In the case, again, of Raspberry Robin, the MSI package would actually, would actually be bundled, would bundle these DLLs and then drop them to disk during the installation process, and then ODBC conf would actually be called to register those DLLs to get execution. So when we enter this, again, we're not going to see much from a, a prompt or anything on the user would see, be executing right in the background. So let's jump into our Splunk data and identify some interesting things. So one of the things that we can look for is ODBC conf executing, so using event ID one, so process creation, with some interesting command line parameters. So in the case, we're going to be looking for that reg SVR parameter, as well as uh, pointing to a DLL. Um, in the case of Raspberry Robin, which we touched on earlier, is those DLL files are actually not just .dll. They're uniquely named. They're kind of interesting file extensions. However, all we need to do when executing this is just point to that file, and then the Windows takes care of the rest. So in this case, this is what we'd see from a command line monitoring. Again, while looking at specific command line parameters is a kind of uh, broad detection and kind of high level. It does also give us opportunities to potentially, from here, deeper dive into more uh, data sources, looking at specifically things like what DLLs were loaded by ODBC comp or what DLLs were loaded uh, specifically. So while this could be considered a brittle detection, it at least gives us a starting point in our detection capabilities to then deeper dive into potentially how does this function, where does it go? So a starting point uh, from our detection optics. All right, our last and final atomic test of the day will be looking at T1218, test number 11, sub technique number 11, and test number one from Atomic Red Team. So in this case, we're going to be looking at run DLL32 making uh, network connections. Now, this atomic test, not necessarily matching directly to like Raspberry Robin per se, because of the way we're going to make run DLL make the network connection. Um, however, the concept is going to be the same. We're going to be looking for run DLL making a network connection. That by itself um, is kind of interesting. 
what we often see is adversaries, when they're using uh, their C2 tools like Cobalt Strike or any sort of modern C2 framework, they're going to be doing some sort of like a process injection or process hollowing to inject into those, spawn into those, and then make their net, and then they'll have a network connection. So in Raspberry Robin, we've seen things like DLL host, register 32 or run DLL32 with no command line parameters making a network connection. Now, traditionally, when those processes spawn, you'll see command line parameter arguments along with them. So not seeing any command line parameter arguments and network connection is an instant red flag. So let's jump into the test, take a look at what we can see. Again, in this case, um, the atomic test doesn't match up perfectly, but the concept is the same. We're going to make run DLL32 actually uh, make a network connection. And then in this case, you'll see notepad spawn. In the case of Raspberry Robin, you generally wouldn't see any of the things kind of pop up in the screen. However, again, run DLL32 making the network connection, that's what we're going to be trying to key off of. Yeah, Paul, I love what you just said there around how like some of these, like they are, you can use them for Raspberry Robin specifically, but more broadly, they can help you detect behavior that we see with a number of threats or this category of activity. Exactly. Spot on. And it's not a, just a, a one-off, like you said, it's pretty much anybody and everybody's using it these days is that these interesting binaries that you never traditionally wouldn't see making network connections, and there's lots of them that we see commonly leveraged and abused. Um, without those parameters or arguments. So in this case, it's gonna be hanging. However, we did get the execution that we are looking for. So let's take a look. So again, leveraging Sysmon, in this case, we're looking at specifically run DLL32. However, in your, whether it's EDR or in your SIM, if you're collecting logs and aggregating that way, you can look for specific processes with no parameters making a network connection. So in this case, we're going back to event ID three, and in this case, what we'll see here is run DLL is going to be making that connection out to, again, GitHub, where our code is stored locally for our test. However, whatever occurs in like the Raspberry Rob infections would have an interesting value for it for that network connection. All right, so we just went through a couple of atomic tests to kind of help us identify some of the interesting techniques that Raspberry Robin uses. So in our blog, we identify some of the potential uh, opportunities for detection. Um, and here's an example of the one leveraging MSI exec. So in the case, MSI exec executing and making an external network connection. In this case, we see the slash Q and the slash I like we saw in our atomic test, but here's a live example that we saw in an actual Raspberry Robin infection. Um, and as we kind of discussed earlier, Lauren, they have some interesting usage of the domains and the network connections they, they uh, utilize. Absolutely, Paul. So yeah, these many of the domains are uh, relatively few characters, uh, typically alphanumeric. Uh, you see the example we have here, jjl.one. Um, and as you noted earlier, like these domains can change. So the indicators themselves, uh, give us context as to something that could be Raspberry Robin, but the dead giveaway here is the uh, use of MSI exec to attempt those connections to domains that we're seeing associated with Raspberry Robin. So uh, for specific details on developing detection logic to identify the C2 activity, we just had Paul talk through and these other components of the Raspberry Robin intrusion chain, check out our blog. We've paired what we know about this threat at each stage of the intrusion chain with testing and detection opportunities. Uh, on the Intel side, we're also continuing to track updates uh, as we see operators using this threat. And we will update our research in near real time with those details for the community.